Hello YouTube, welcome to a new and exciting video on TGT and in this video we'll be building a $100 Minecraft server. So let's go over with the parts. Over here I have a 4 gigabyte DDR3 SO DIMM 1.35 volt memory. For my motherboard, which includes a CPU, is the Azeroc D1800B-ITX. For my boot drive, I'll be using an ADATA 64GB Premier SP800 SSD. For OS installation, you need a minimum of a 1GB flash drive, but I'll be using a 16GB Toshiba. You are also going to need a ATX power supply. I'll be using this old 250 watt power supply from an old desktop computer. Alright, so we're first going to remove the motherboard from its anti stack bag. Make sure you're working in a non anti stack environment. I'm wearing an anti stack wristband so I don't accidentally destroy the motherboard by just touching it. We're going to put it on our motherboard box since it's a non conductive, a wooden surface will also do fine. And now, first thing we're going to do is going to install our memory. If you only have one stick of RAM, in this case I only have one stick, make sure you install the single stick of RAM onto the, the slot where it says DDR3A1. Sorry if you guys can't see that, but it's the slot left from the I.O. ports from my perspective. Also make sure you line the notch with the RAM with the notch on the slot. You line it up, and then you push down firmly until both of the brackets click into place. Now we're going to plug in our 24 pin, or in this case a 20 pin power ATX power connector from the power supply into the 24 pin uh, connector on the motherboard. Now since the motherboard doesn't actually use much power, a 20 pin ATX power connector is still plenty of power for this motherboard. Make sure you line it up with the 20 pins that ma match and then push down so that the connector fits. Next we're going to take our SSD, plug it in with the SATA connector from your power supply. Then we're also going to take a SATA cable which is included with the motherboard, plug it into the SATA connector on the motherboard. Make sure you plug it in the right way. And then connect the data portion to the data connector on to the SSD as well. Before we begin installing our server, we're going to be needing to download a few things. All the links will be provided in the description below. The operating system we'll be using is Ubuntu Server, and I'll be using version 14.04.3 LTX. You can press the download button right here. Second thing is the pen drive, oh, actually the universal USB installer. Just scroll down all the way and click the download button right here. The third depends on our mod pack. I'll be downloading Ticket Legends. You can go ahead and press the server download over here. The fourth and final thing, which we really don't actually need to download, is um, we're going to need to create a Dropbox account so that we can get a downloadable URL for our uh, the server zip file. Once we have downloaded our Ticket Legends server and create a Dropbox account, we click here to upload the zip file. Go to your zip file, in this case I have it on my desktop, and press open and let it upload. After a few minutes, we have uploaded our Ticket Legends server zip file. We're going to press share. Then right here on this URL link, copy or write this down somewhere. With the only exception is that at the very end where it says DL equals 0, ch right, change that to DL equals 1. Next, we're going to use our universal USB installer that we have downloaded earlier. Press I agree. On step 1, we're going to press Ubuntu server installer. Step 2, we're going to press a browse and um, select the um, server ISO that we have downloaded earlier. Make sure that it's AMD64. And then we're also going to select our flash drive. We're also going to check format uh, the drive. Now this will delete everything on your flash drive. So make sure that you copy any files that you need. Press create. Press yes. And then after a few minutes, our flash drive should be ready. 
All right, we are almost ready for our first boot test. Just make sure that your flash drive, a keyboard, your display connector, and an ethernet cable is connected to the motherboard before you begin. Now, to start up your computer, according to the instructions manual of the motherboard, if the camera can please focus. On the last two pins on top row that has a missing pin, it says power and then ground. So, in order to do that, I took in a metallic object, in this case a screwdriver, and if you guys can get a nice view, I'm now going to short those two pins. You'll know if I've done it correctly, as you can see the power supply fan is starting up, and I have to hit the delete key on my motherboard, and oh, it already automatically went to the Ubuntu set up. Alright, once we have booted into our USB flash drive, we get this menu. Uh, you, go, you can go ahead and press any language you want. For now, we're going to press English. We're going to press Install Ubuntu Server. You move around with the arrow keys. After a few seconds, we press English again. We're going to select our country. I live in the United States. And it says here you can try to have your keyboard layout. Um, we're going to press no for now. English, US English. All right, after a minute or two, it'll give us this. Um, we're going to go ahead and enter a host name for the system. I'm just going to use the default. I'm going to press the down arrow key to press it to continue. We're going to enter a username account. So I'm going to use a stock blast. Go ahead, press their down and arrow key again, press and continue. Go ahead and change your username. It's the same thing as well. We're going to enter our password. Down and arrow key again to press continue. We're going to re-enter our password again. We can go ahead and press con and continue again. We have entered a weak password. Um, let's just press yes for now. You may configure home directory encryption. We are going to press no, and we're going to give a few minutes for this to finish its job, or maybe rather a few seconds, uh, based on your present location. Your time zone is America, North America, New York. Is that correct? Yes. We are going to select guided Yoon's entire disk and set up as LVM. We want to select that our hard drive. Select yes to save changes. Use the maximum data, so we're going to type in max. Press this again. After a few minutes, it'll ask us for a proxy server. We're just going to leave it blank and press continue. After another few minutes, it's going to ask us for applying updates. Um, for now, we're going to say no automatic updates. Um, it's also going to ask us for some software that we can pre-install. We're not going to install any of this, so we can just go ahead and press enter to continue. We will then select yes for the bootloader. Finally, our installation is complete, and we're going to press continue to reboot the computer. Once the computer has rebooted, we get to this menu. We are going to log in with the account information that we have gave it from the OS installation. We we'll also type in our password. And there we go. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is to install Java. To do this, we're going to type in sudo, which is basically the, uh, the root permission modifier for every command that we put in to um, the server. So sudo apt-get update. This will update. Oh, we also need to type in our password. So once that is finished, next we're also going to type in sudo space apt-get space install python dash software dash properties
and we're going to press yes for continue. Next, we're going to type in sudo space add dash apt uh, dash repository space ppa colon w e b u p d eight team dash java wanna press enter to add it once that's finished we are going to type in sudo space apt dash get space update again this will refresh our dong list of available programs the last line we need to install java is sudo space apt dash get space install oracle dash java 8 dash installer I'm going to press Y for yes. After a minute, we're, we'll get this uh, menu. We're going to press enter for OK, and we are going to accept the license. After a few minutes, we are going to test if Java is installed by typing the command java space dash ver version. And as you can see, it says Java version 1.8 update 60 and it is using the 64-bit server VRM. I am just going to clear the console by pressing Control L. Now we can start creating our Minecraft server. The first step is to make a folder or directory for a Minecraft server. To do that, type in mkdir space minecraft underscore server. You can actually name this the last portion whatever you want, but I'm just going to type in Minecraft server so it'll be easy to know in the future. Or we'll type in the ls command to view all folders within our directory. And we're also now going to type in cd minecraft underscore server to go into the Minecraft server. Now, the second thing we need to do is to download a program called unzip. Since um, Ubuntu doesn't already include it, we're going to have to manually install it ourselves. To do that, type in sudo space apt dash get install unzip. Once we've downloaded unzip, we can start downloading our server. To do that, type in w get space the URL of the share link that we have gotten from. Dropbox earlier. Make sure that you typed in DL equals 1 at the end and press enter. If you type the URL incorrectly, you can you don't need to retype in the entire thing. You can just press shift and then up arrow key and then you can change the text to make sure that it's the same. Once you've done it correctly and you'll know if it takes more than a few seconds and in this case it also tells us the size which is about 104 megabytes, which is correct. We can then extract the file, but first we got to rename it to make sure that it is a .zip. Because right now, if I press the ls command, it'll say .zip question mark dl equals one. To change that, we're going to press type in mv space techit legends that file. But the thing is that you can also press the, the first letter and then press T and it'll autofill it for you space for now I'm just going to name it server.zip and then we press ls command and again it'll this time it'll turn red which means it's a recognizable file and it is a .zip file to extract server.zip we now use the program that we uh, installed earlier so we type in unzip space s and we can press tab press enter and it should unzip the file for us we can check it by pressing ls and as you can see there is a config file the ticket legends.jar file i'm just going to press control l to clear the screen again and this time we're going to find our server 
networking information. To do this, type in if config. And as you can see, somewhere in Ethernet 0, there should be something that says INET -E space ADDR and then the number sequence. Write down that number sequence. That is your LAN IP address for your server. To find your WAN IP, I mean, WAN IP address, I'm just going to press Control L again to clear screen. We're typing curl space dash s space I can has zip dot com and then in that number and right above that's your WAN IP address so when WAN IP address is used for is when there is other people that's trying to connect to your server they type in that IP address if you, there's people inside your own local network you use the what LAN IP address now, in order for them to access it using the WAN IP address, you also have to do port range forwarding on your router. I will not be showing you guys how to do this due to the fact that it variates a lot depending on the manufacturer of the router. To start up our server, we need to type in Java space dash capital X MX and then the memory heap size, which is basically the amount of RAM your server will use. And now this uh, depends on how much RAM your computer is configured with. Uh, for me, I'm going to be using 3000 megabytes, which is about 3 gigabytes, which is plenty for a modded server like this. And then we're going to type in dash jar space techitlegends.jar. Now make sure you uh, type in the jar file that has the name of your mod pack or the name forge in it. Don't use minecraft server.jar because if you use that that's only if you're using a um, vanilla server. Since we're going to be using a mod server, we're going to type in techkitlegends.jar. I can just press tab to autofill. There we go. Then we can press enter. Once the server finished starting up, don't join the server because it's not ready for any players yet. We're going to turn it off by typing STOP. And then after it's turned off, I'm just going to press Control L to clear the screen again. Press LS to view the files. Now, as you can see, it created new um, files. We are going to go into the server.properties file. To do that, type in nano space server server.properties. I can probably press tab to autofill. And then this allows us to edit the properties file. You can go ahead and type in a new seed if you want, but if you want to do that, I'm going, you're going to have to delete the world file, which I'll show later. But most importantly right now, where it says server IP address, type in your LAN IP address of your server. Once you have typed in your server LAN IP address, you can save and close by pressing Control X, press Y, and then press Enter. When press Control L to clear the screen, press LS again. Now earlier, if you put in a seed in your server.properties file, you're going to need to regenerate your world. To do that, type in rm space dash rf space world. And this, if I press ls again, will delete the world file. Now we can restart our Minecraft server by pressing java dash x MX and that's a capital X your memory heap size I'll be using three gigabytes and then dash jar space ticket legends dot jar now once the server is loaded up you can now actually join your server by using the LAN IP address to turn off your server and shut down the computer you simply need to type in STOP to shut down the Minecraft server and then after that, type in sudo space power off space now. And if you enter that command, it'll turn off your server.